Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. Today I am going to color out of Johanna's Christmas. I had talked about this in my last color and chat, I believe. And we are going to straight color with the new set of 120 of Arteza Expert Colored Pencils. So, of course, I have a handy dandy color chart completed. If anybody's interested in this, just go ahead and email me and I will send you a copy. So, how is everybody doing? I figured we would color. Let's see, I think I'm going to put these to the side here. I thought we would color this. Um, I wanted to color a picture out of here that was just a little bit simpler um, just because of the fact that I'm going to be coloring with colored pencils and we all know that colored pencil is the slowest medium there is to color with. And then I thought um, because there are some finer details in here I would get out my glitter gel pens too and I love the Sargent Arts. Um, it's just a 10 set but you can get bulk uh, uh, bulk supply, I guess, of each specific color in a set of 25 or I think 96 or you can even get a pack of 200, I believe. <laughs> so I have all the colors now. Pink they did not have for the longest time, but now that one is out there too. So at the time that I bought it, they only had the big box of pink. So I did get the big box because I use that so often, my pink and purple. Matter of fact, I'm going to have to get another box of the purples and the blues because I use those a lot. Um, but yeah, you can get bulk of these colors. So I will link this down below um, as well as one of the bulk boxes. And then you can look at the others if you're interested, if you want to... Uh, look at those glitter gel pens they color very smoothly so yeah and sometimes I like just having the small set because I'm just looking for say a red orange red a red orange red yeah yellow orange red combo or my purple and pink or you know whatever so do you like my nails I put them on just for you guys. <laughs> you know, all the other colorists have such pretty nails, and I'm always sitting here with my plain little short stubby things. Um, <laughs> so I just bought some cheap press-on nails off of Amazon. It was a set of five, and I thought, well, let's see how these are going to work. I wanted to find some shorter ones. I couldn't find any shorter ones. If anybody out there knows where you can get shorter press on nails let me know in the comments below because yeah these are very long for somebody that doesn't normally have longer nails even when my normal nails start growing out it's like eh, they're getting too long and I trim them all back again so we'll see how long they stay on number one if I can stand it number two if they don't fall off so one way or the other they're probably going to be coming off shortly <laughs> Okay, where should we start on this? It's a Christmassy mandala. And let's start with the leaves because I know for sure the ivy leaves I'm going to want to do green. So let's see what shade of green we should use here. I have not colored with these pencils yet, so I'm kind of curious to see how they're going to color. I think I'm going to use basil green. I do have my sharpener here, basil. Um, I sharpened them all just to do the color chart, so they are all sharpened. I shouldn't really need to sharpen any of them, but I did bring this over. I love this pencil sharpener. Um, it's by Office Goods. I'll link this down below, and I will if <laughs> one of you uh, few people have not gotten uh, Johanna Bassford's book. Um, but this pencil sharpener 
you know it has the three the blunt the medium and the and the real sharp I don't even have to put it on the real sharp and it gets it to a fine point and I don't even have a problem with my Prismacolors in this so I like the fact that it's battery operated or you can plug it in um, I just run it off the batteries but uh, yeah so I like that and I'll be using that so again we're just going to straight color I have not colored with colored pencils in a Coons age and when I posed the question a while back if you know I had said something about in the new year I was thinking about possibly straight coloring you know with some colored pencils if anybody would be interested in that and I had a resounding yes please so I thought we would go ahead and do that now I'm coloring kind of with a harder pressure just because I am not going to be doing any blending and uh, because I have not colored with colored pencils in quite a while plus I am not used to coloring with long nails <laughs> There's no guarantees that I am not going to go out of the lines, but that's okay. So, yeah, how's everybody doing? Is it freezing where you guys are too? I just got in from taking Bella outside and oh my gosh, my hands are just, they're froze. Our wind chills this morning were like between 30 and 35 below zero. <sighs> so yeah these last couple days have really been miserable and I had to get out today I actually have today off it is Wednesday so I do hope to get this color and chat up yet today and then maybe finish well <laughs> won't be finishing this I'll let me zoom in I'm sorry um, not that of course we're gonna finish this picture in two parts I will probably color some of it off camera just so that we don't have you know four or five parts to one picture I want to get on to you know coloring something else with you guys too these uh, colored pencils are very nice they color very nice they're you know they're a softer pencil but of course not as soft as Prismacolor there is no such thing <laughs> even getting close to Prismacolor there's nothing so soft as those and that's why typically if you're going to straight color and you want to use harder pressure to get the the white you know you don't want to leave any white in your coloring your prismas are probably your best bet but for a more economical pencil boy you can't really beat Arteza they just color so nicely and I love the feel of these the first time I colored with these to do a, a color chart I'm like oh these just feel so nice in the hand <laughs> they're you know they have a weight to them and they remind me in look uh, so similar to the polychromos I do have a full review and swatching of these in a video and I compare them to the 72 set so that we could uh, see what new colors were added and uh, see how nice of a point that gets and you barely gotta sharpen it at all in that sharpener and just because I am straight coloring I am gonna need a, a fine tip to color this and so that I keep that uh, sharp edge while I'm coloring you may see that uh, as I pick the pencil up I always automatically turn it a little bit so that you always have the sharp side to color with 
And I just, <laughs> I guess I just have always done that. And I don't even think about it anymore. I just automatically do it whenever I pick up the, the pencil from the paper. I just automatically twirl it. Anybody else do that when you're coloring with colored pencil? I figured I wanted to get out my pencils more in uh, 2020. My, you know, they're starting to rebel. I think they're starting to hate my markers and my gel pens. For the longest time, they, uh, you know, were really threatening my gel pens because that's all I colored with was my glitter gel pens. So yeah, they were very jealous. <laughs> Now, I've been coloring more with markers than I have been with my gel pens. That's very unusual for me. Okay, another thing I know I'm going to color, um, or how I'm going to color, is the candy canes. And I'm just going to do the standard, you know, red, white, red, white. So, I'm going to keep the basil. Now, so that I remember what color I am using in the picture. Rather than keeping them out and separate, I just put mine in the opposite way. I don't know if any of you do that. So then I know that that color was one that I used in this particular picture. And then when I'm done with the picture, I'll put them back the regular way. So if I ever want to use, I'm like, oh, I want to use that green up here. I know what green I've used. So... Just a little tip if you didn't know that. I'm sure many of you do. All right, so candy cane. I think I'm going to use carmine red. So, carmine, carmine. There we go. So yeah, anybody else for reason? Let's see. Red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white. Okay. It seems like a lot of the areas throughout the country are freezing right now. Not just up here. I know for you, those of you in the south, it's probably like a yes we're not in the 90s or the hundreds anymore for us it's like no winter has hit already it's like oh you know we had quite a bit of snow in november already and it's like or the beginning of december it's like it's not even technically winter yet we have a few weeks to go before it's technically winter. Good heavens. So I really think this is going to be another long winter. Boy, I hope I'm wrong. But I heard two different things. Originally, I heard that, yes, it's going to be another horrible, horrible winter like last year. And I apologize. I'm going to be having to shift my book to the angle that I need it. Um, anyhow, originally I had heard, yes, that this is going to be a horrible, horrible, cold, snowy winter. But now, more recently, I heard that now it's supposed to be milder than last year. So I hope that second report that I heard is going to come true. Worked out really good. I was supposed to have a dentist appointment yesterday. And so Heather would have had to take some time off while I was gone. So she could come out and watch the kids while I was gone. And then I'd come home and she'd go back to work. Well, my dentist appointment got canceled because my dentist was sick, but they had a cancellation for today. And the person that had called me to cancel my appointment yesterday didn't want me to take that 
appointment in case she was out sick yet today. And I'm like, you know, so I had to reschedule it. Well, I had to have a filling put in. And I knew that, you know, if I didn't get it filled shortly, because it was a rather large filling that I needed. And I couldn't get in until February then. And I'm like, February? I was a little perturbed because I had already called to see if I could get in earlier than yesterday because I knew that was going to become a problem tooth. And uh, no, I had nothing open until February. And I says, good heavens, by February they'll probably have to pull the tooth. And uh, so yeah, I made an appointment for next February. And then I thought about it and I'm like, you know, why didn't she just put me down for the appointment for today? Because there was a cancellation at 9.30. And so I called her back and I said, you know, somebody just called me, you know, I had to cancel my appointment because my dentist was out ill. I said, can you just put me down for that appointment today at 9.30? And uh, if, you know, she happens to be sick again, just call me then. And so the person that I talked to said, yes, we can do that. And uh, so, yeah, they put me down. And just so I had peace of mind and knew for sure if I was going to be having to go in today, because then, you know, it was at 930 already. And I wanted to make sure I had gotten up and taken my shower and brushed my teeth really good. <laughs> <laughs> we always brush our teeth extra good when we go to the dentist, right? <laughs> um, so I thought, eh, I'm going to call them and just double check and see. And they said, no, she, she was in. So, so I said, okay, we're good to go then for 930. And they says, yep, we're good to go. It's like, yes, I really didn't want to get out today in this flipping cold weather because Heather's having her snow tires put on finally. So Adam's mom and dad are watching the grandkids. So I finally got a day off. Yay. But uh, yeah. Still had to go out in this cold weather, but I have been meaning to get my hair cut too for the longest time and have just been putting that off. So I called to see if my stylist was working today and she was. Didn't have any colors or perms till four and it's like, this was meant to be. <laughs> so after my dentist appointment, I went over and I got my hair cut. Boy, we're just all ready. Okay, what color? Let's let's do the. I'm waiting to do the middle here to see what colors I want to put in here. Once I get probably out to this far, because I'm not sure what I want to put in there. So let's do the bows and the ribbons. Wonder. Let's see. Huh. Do I want to go with a purple or maybe a blue? Don't want to use the typical red because of the red candy canes. Unless I do a dark red. No, I think that'll clash with the candy canes. Hmm. And you do see purples. Yeah, let's do purple purple bows and ribbons. How about violet? Such decisions we gotta make when we're coloring. Man, oh man. It's one thing, the one reason I like color by number sometimes because you don't have to think. <laughs> Thinking can really hurt the brain some days, right? It can hurt. 
especially after I'm kind of brain dead and tired after watching the kids all day. It's like it's nice to just sit down with color by number book and get out whatever coloring supply I have figured out for that coloring book because as I've mentioned in the past I have to have my colors all figured out ahead of time so then I can just pull them as needed so like my my uh, Belba family color by number books the mosaic color by number books I I always use my twi markers in and um, what's the other ones that I use? My t oh, all of my circle, square, and hexagon mosaic books I use twi markers on. And so I have them, what colors I use, all written down. I use my Statler dual ended for, um, I have those also figured out for all the circle mosaic books. And I have one other one figured out too, another coloring medium. So I can switch it up for the color by number books for the, um, for the circle mosaics and square and hexagon. Of course, I've been coloring a lot of Christmas pictures. Have you guys all been coloring Christmas? I colored a, a few non-Christmas, but of course, a lot of Christmas pictures. I just finished one up, so the next one that I want to do is a uh, Sun Life Drawing out of their Christmas Mosaics book. I love that book. It looks so neat when they're done. I have Belba Family's newest book coming. I cannot wait to get it. Not sure when it will be coming, but... And then Sun Life Drawing has a new book out too. It's another one color book. I love those books. Again, it's a it's a no brainer type of book to color. You know, you pick out one color and you go for it. Of course, you don't have to. You can you can uh, pick out whatever you want. So yeah, I think I finally got all my doctor's appointments done. I have had so many lately. I had my bariatric checkup, which I have to go in once a year since I had my bariatric surgery. That was seven years ago. I can't believe it's been that long, but it was in... 2012 December 3rd <laughs> 2012 so yeah seven years it just I can't believe it's been that long but yet on the other hand it's really hard to remember before I had it done you know it's like a whole new way of life now so many people think that having bariatric surgery is cheating you know, it's the easy way out, and believe me, it's not. You still have to change the way you eat. You still have to exercise. You know, it, it's not cheating. It is a tool to help you, but it's definitely not cheating, and it's definitely not easy, especially in the beginning. Oh, my heavens going back through the stages of being able to eat is kind of a nightmare because you progress from clear liquids to soft foods for a while to you know so I knew exactly what Bob was going through when uh, he had his esophageal cancer surgery 
and he had to slowly progress back to solid foods too and I was able to help him out you know in that regard and you know I ate a lot of different flavors of puddings and jello and so I made him a lot of that kind of stuff but anyhow so yeah I had the bariatric appointment I had to have my kidney checkup I have to go for that once a year too um, because I don't know if I ever talked about this a number of years ago it was suddenly discovered I don't know why then and not before but it was suddenly discovered during one of my annual exams that my creatinine levels were quite high quite out of you know the normal range way above the normal range and that just kind of indicates if there's you know what waste products are in your blood and a number of other things go along with that but so they sent me to a nephrologist a kidney specialist and they did an ultrasound and lo and behold I only have one functioning kidney <laughs> my right kidney has atrophied down to almost non-existent you can't even hardly see it it's so little and then my left kidney is very large um, assuming it's you know trying to compensate for the right one but it's doing a good enough job where I don't have to worry about dialysis or anything like that um, I do just have a little bit you know a little bit of extra junk <laughs> in my blood <laughs> I guess I'm twirling you guys around I hope I'm not making you dizzy um, so yeah I have that going on but everything's looking really good in between uh, checkups you know the first sign that something would be going wrong would be my blood pressure going up and I've always had really low blood pressure so I definitely would be able to you know I'd be able to notice it right away if my blood pressure started going up so and haven't had that problem so all my levels looked good going into that appointment too so everything's been good news and yeah I had dentist a couple dentist appointments and my um, psychiatric checkup I have to go there every three to four months just to you know check in and see how things are going that's for my depression and anxiety and things have been going good so staying on the same meds and it's so funny when I was talking to him though and he is so nice I really really like him um, my psychiatrist asked how things were going and he knew you know what we were all going through you know with um, Bob and his cancer and stuff and he asked how Bob was doing and I said eh, so so he still has so much pain and now it's it's like it's going into his muscles into like his pecs and stuff he gets it up in his chest area and I said Bob I said the only thing I mean it almost sounds like it's following his muscles and yeah it oh, sometimes it hurts so bad it almost takes his breath away and so I was telling my psychiatrist this and <laughs> he told me something that was so surprising it really took me by surprise I couldn't believe he was saying it but he said you know if there ever was a candidate for medical marijuana it would be cases like Bob's and I said you know I can't agree with you more um, somebody that's in chronic pain like that 
Um, you know, it's not like they're taking the, you know, marijuana to get high or anything, and it's not that, you know, he'd be smoking it, you know, Bob's going to go roll a joint, you know. <laughs> In the first place, I could never picture Bob doing that. Ah, uh, uh, too funny. And then, you know, secondly, it w would be edibles, you know. You ever hear of the laced brownies? Well, yeah, that's it. Now they have, you know, gummies and, you know, I'm sure everybody knows. But, uh, and, you know, he said, unfortunately, I can't, you know, prescribe it. Because, yeah, it's not legal here. Um, okay, let's go to the ornament. So, yeah, let's do some blues. Maybe blue and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yet. Um, so it's like, well, so how is a person supposed to even get it? You know, you go on the street or what? <laughs> and like I told Bob, I said, you know, even if you knew where to get it from, I would never trust getting anything on the street because you don't know what it's laced with, right? It could be laced with who knows what. Do I want to go with a light blue or a darker blue? Hmm. <laughs> How about if we go with a little bit of a darker blue, but nothing too dark? We'll go middle of the road. So, hmm. <laughs> Let's go with Egyptian blue. So, yeah, I, <laughs> I told Bob this, and, of course, you can imagine what his reaction was. <laughs> but, you know, he, he kind of surprised me in that he didn't just totally blow it off. The closest states to us that legal, has it legalized is Michigan. And then Illinois just passed it also not too long ago. So, you know, they are surrounding states. But, uh, you know, either way that we would go, even if we were to just go to the UP, the upper peninsula of Michigan, it would still, you know, be like a good four-hour one-way trip. So it's like, mm, that's not really feasible either. You know, unless we, you know, if you really wanted to try it. You know, I'm assuming someday all the states are going to have at least the medical marijuana. I don't understand why all the states don't have medical marijuana legalized. Like I said, it's not that these people are doing it to get high you know there's even been accounts of where medical marijuana has totally changed kids lives like the one story i heard of where this kid was severely epileptic and had so many bad seizures every day and they got him on medical marijuana and his seizures dropped down to only like a couple a day you know and his seizures were bad i guess and yeah to go from dozens a day down to just a few had i mean that's incredible i mean that is just that's a miracle that something like medical marijuana could do that. And you do hear of how it can relieve people's pain, especially in cancer patients. So why a doctor cannot prescribe that for one of their patients when they know that it would help this person? And if for some reason it didn't, well, you know, then you don't prescribe it anymore for them. But at least give them the option. You know, maybe some of, you know, the older folks wouldn't even be comfortable with it. 
And that's why I thought Bob would have just scoffed at the idea, but he really didn't. So I truly know how desperate he is getting to try to relieve some of this pain. I feel so bad for him. That poor man has been through so much that, you know, he just needs a break from it all finally. If it hasn't been one thing, it's been another. You know, either the stent in his esophagus has gone haywire and he can't swallow again, or, you know, it's just, it's always been something. He has been back in the hospital so many times to have the a new stent put in. And uh, this last time they were talking about putting a permanent one in. Because they always, for some reason, just wanted a temporary stent put in there and that they could take it out in like three to six months. Well, he never even got to three months before he had to have it fixed and have a new one put in. So I don't think that's ever going to be an option for him. This last time now they, instead of with the one they had been doing, they put in a longer stent this last time because the other one just was not working and it's about time they figured it out after, you know, four tries. And uh, this one seems to be staying put, but it goes into his stomach a little bit because it's a little too long and they don't have anything in between. And so he can feel that in there sometimes, especially when he bends over. That would bug the heck out of me. So, you know, there's that. But they do have, you know, like I said, the ones, the stents you can put in permanently. Unfortunately, they don't have this machinery, I don't know, the, the instrument that they need to attach it to the esophagus. There's there's something that they need that attaches it inside in the esophagus so it stays put. And I guess this whatever instrument that they need has just been approved not that long ago. And so our hospital here does not have it yet. And, you know, I said to Bob, I said, well, I sure as heck hope they get it soon. <laughs> because that would be something that would be perfect for Bob. It most, you know, it wouldn't be able to get displaced because it would be, you know, attached right to his esophagus. It couldn't go anywhere. And uh, so... I don't know. He hasn't been having a lot of problems lately. So I think they're kind of taking a wait and see attitude, which I don't like. I wish they would just be proactive rather than reactive, you know. But that's uh, really not been their philosophy, I guess. Darn doctors, I tell you. Right? I think we've all been there. One way or another. So, yeah. So, yeah, I think I... I think I got all my doctor's appointments out of the way now. And everything went good. Yay, hooray. Can start the new year off with a bang. <laughs> they just all happen to come up at the same time. Oh, that's right. I got to call my psychiatrist back and set up my next appointment. I didn't want to take the time to do it because it was during the day. Heather had to come here to watch the kids while I went in for the appointment. And... Normally, you know, I'm only in there with them for like 15 minutes. 
So I said it shouldn't take too long, even though the healthcare center is way down the other side of Wassa. So it, it takes a while longer to get there rather than just on the west side of Wassa. But I sat there and waited and waited and waited. It was over a half an hour. And I went up and I talked to them and I said, I have been waiting here. I said, is, you know, for like a half an hour, I said, is he going to be coming pretty soon? And she's like, oh, uh, let me check on that. <laughs> and so she tried to get a hold of his nurse. One moment. And nurse didn't answer. Of course. Why would that happen? And uh, so she walked down the hall and she told the other nurse down there about, you know, what was going on. And I said, okay. You know, thinking all the while, oh God, you know, the other wants to get back to work and here I'm sitting. And so I waited some more and it was like another 15 minutes had gone by and finally I got up. I was at the window to say I'm just going to have to reschedule because I can't stay any longer. And just as we were looking at, you know, when the next available date would be, then my doctor came out to get me. So, but, oh, uh, so because I was running so late, even though it wasn't my fault, I didn't want to take the time after the appointment to schedule my next one in four months. So I have to remember to call and schedule that. That's why I always schedule it right away because I never remember to call and do it. That one time I was running late too for something. I think it was another appointment. And so I didn't stop at the desk to make the next appointment then either. And yeah, totally forgot to call. <laughs> I think it was like maybe a month before I was supposed to have my four month recheck. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot to make that appointment. So I called and of course, you know, couldn't get in for quite a while. So he had to just call in a one month prescription for all my prescriptions until he could see me because I had to get them renewed, but he didn't want to give me another, you know, four months prescription until he saw me. So because I'm on a number of meds from him and then Oh yeah, that's another appointment I probably got to make. <laughs> I have uh, hypothyroidism, so I have to be on a medication for my thyroid too. And I think I got to have that rechecked sometime too. Oh good heavens. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Just thought of that now. This old body's falling apart, I tell you. Too many things. You know, especially at this time of year. Who thinks about that stuff? There's too many other things going on. <laughs> oh, man. So everybody have their Christmas shopping done? That's enough talking about doctors. <laughs> Let's get on to the happy subject of Christmas. Well, happy for most of us. Not necessarily happy for everybody, and I I recognize that. You know, some people are alone on Christmas and whatnot, so or they lost a loved one near Christmas or this past year. So it's not necessarily a happy time for everybody. Um. Okay, let's do silver in here with the glitter gel pens. 
Mmm, dry in here, of course, so I'm so thirsty. I can tell it on my skin. I mean, ugh. My skin looks like I'm 80 years old all the time. Plus the fact I don't use hand lotion. I really should use hand lotion, and I really don't. And yet, especially with having the kids, I'm washing my hands constantly during the day. So yeah, they get quite dried out. So yeah, I definitely should be putting hand, hand cream on. Well, even getting out of the shower, you know, I should be putting some body lotion on because, yeah, it is just so dry. I always say in wintertime, when I pet my kitties, I give them ECT treatments. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what ECT is, it's electroshock therapy that they use for depression, believe it or not. That's why I know about it. Um, and no, it's not as barbaric as what you see in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. It's nothing like that, and I should know because I went through it many times, actually. I had a set of ECT treatments um, well, that was many years ago when I first got diagnosed with my depression. Um, so 2001, 2000 is when I was first diagnosed because of an attempted suicide. Um, but yeah, I just wasn't responding to the meds and everything, so... We decided to try ECT. So that's impatient and you have, I can't remember if it's every day, every other day you have a treatment and it's a series of, uh, there were a lot. Again, I don't really remember them um, because of the ECT, some of my short and long-term memories not good. Um, many people it doesn't bother at all and they still do periodically use ECT just not as much as they used to. But for some people it is a godsend. It, it really really helps them and for me it really did but it was temporary. That was the only problem. It just, it only lasted so long. And then I was back to my, my depressed state. But they later tried, tried it again. <laughs> and so I went back to the hospital for a whole nother series. So yeah, you're, you're there for a few weeks. But Again, it, it worked, but was short-lived. Then they had wanted to do it a third time, and my sister kind of was my, my older sister was, God bless her, I wouldn't have survived without her. She, while I was impatient and stuff, she handled all my finances, um, you know, looked out for me, handled all my paperwork, and you know, she's the one that said, Lisa, the first two series didn't work. What makes you think this one would? So that's when I decided, no, you're right. So didn't go through it. And we eventually got my meds to the right levels, the right combination. It just, you know, it takes a long time to, you know, everybody's different. And the right combos and right levels and everything is different for everybody. But we finally got it figured out. And I've uh, never looked back. <laughs> if I can help it. I, I don't like to remember that part of my life, of course. So, 
well, and, <laughs> and some of it I don't remember, so. I know I've told this story before, but for any of you new subscribers, you know, there would be things that my kids would bring up that I'm like, well, I don't remember that. Heather one time was talking something about when she had broke her arm, and I said, you broke your arm? <laughs> She just laughs. She goes, yes, Mom, I did. I said, when did you do that? She just kind of laughed. And because my second attempt at suicide, yes, I, I tried it twice, um, was right before Christmas. And I, when I look back on it now, it's like, oh, my heavens, how selfish could I be but yet I know that it's not really a choice that people make you know anyhow um, so I had my tree up and I had the kids presents all bought and stuff but we you know they couldn't open them until after I had gotten back home which was a number of months later and so they got a very late Christmas. And with my memory, I didn't remember what I had bought in them. So I was just as surprised and excited as they were <laughs> when they opened their presents. <laughs> oh, God. Again, we all kind of laugh at that one, too. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. I'm debating whether I should put... No, I won't. I think what I'll do, though, is I'll get... I wonder if I have that here. One moment. Let's see. I think... Let's see. That one's white. Which one? Where's a scribble sheet here? Yeah. Where's my... Where is my glitter one? I just have my white, um, like my white jelly roll. Is that, is that a shiny one? Yeah, it is. Okay. All right. We're cooking with gas. I think what I'm going to do then is I'm going to make the white parts shiny. This is the Sakura jelly roll. And this is the clear um, glitter one. So I like these. Not sure how long we're going to color today. We're at, what, 53 minutes. And I still haven't gotten to that center, have I? <laughs> Got to put some bling bling on here. This is so much easier than colored pencil. But I do ha like how this is looking. Use my colored pencils more. Show them some love. And we'll be putting some other bling on here too, I'm sure. Make it sparkly for Christmas. So yeah, I was asking, does everybody have their shopping done? I suppose some of you have everything wrapped already too. I am actually going to be doing that this weekend. Even though I haven't received everything in the mail yet, I decided I better get what's in there wrapped because of Miss Madison. <laughs> she came in there with me. What day was that last week? And I didn't, oh, that was when I came back from my appointment with my psychiatrist. 
and I quick went in there to get changed. And Madison, of course, had to follow me. Well, that's where all of the presents were. And of course, she had to spy one. Well, she's seen one of Levi's first. And, okay, I talked her out of that one. Well, then she spied one that was for her, and it was a Puppy Dog Pals book that you could push buttons on, and it would talk to you and stuff. And I'm like, okay, I am not going to get her to put that one down. And it was one of her smaller presents anyhow. So I said, fine, you can take that one out in the living room. But yeah, I want to get them all wrapped so that if she goes in my room again, she won't see anything. And I have them all stacked up. Plus, I have a bunch of empty boxes that I have stored in there in case, you know, we always need uh, boxes to put stuff in that are too hard to wrap. Okay, let's see if we can see that shine. Mm, not this way, I can't. Oh, sort of. Hmm, okay. Okay, let's decide now what we do want to do in the middle. Should we make it look like a, like a star on the top of a Christmas tree? So we'd have a yellow, or maybe multiple colors in here. Yellow around the outside. How about that? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll choose three different colors. One, two, three, yeah. We'll do three different colors. So what colors shall we go with? Hmm. If I'm gonna do the outside yellow, I'm trying to think what's usually up in a Christmas tree topper. We usually have reds, greens, yellows, some pinks. So let's do a red, different shade of red than that probably. I don't know, is there oranges? It's a lot of blue over there already. Is there pinks? Let me see. We have a little bit of purple here. Well, let's pick a different green than that. So I'm going to use a lighter, brighter green. I think I'm going to go with apple green. It's, I'm sure, not the color that you would see in a tree topper, but we're going to go with it anyhow. And then different kind of red. I don't know, should we go with like a pinky red, like magenta or vermilion maybe? Let's do vermilion because that's more of a, or Venetian red, that's like an orangey red. So we'll do Venetian red. So we got red and green, what do we want to go with that? What's the yellow we're going to use around the outside? Let's do sunflower yellow. Sorry for my arm. And the other color we're going to put in the middle. I think we'll go with the purple because again, there's so much blue. And let's go with a darker purple, amethyst purple. Yep, yep, that's what we'll do. It takes a person forever to decide this, right? And as you can tell, I don't plan it out ahead of time. I don't know if you guys would prefer that. And if you would, let me know. And I can look at this and plan it all out ahead of time so I don't waste so much time on camera. But <laughs> I guess you kind of get to see my uh, decision uh, making. <laughs> There is no rhyme to my madness. It's just like, okay, let's do this. Okay. 
oh I wanted the purple in between the red and the green so I'm gonna put a red there and a green there And I think after we get this middle done, then we're going to stop for today. And then, yeah, I will be doing some of this off camera huh? until I feel that I have about an hour's worth of work left. So really, I think the only thing I'm going to do off camera is probably the little birdies and the reindeer. So the vast majority of this picture we're going to be doing on camera because I will leave the the ivy, the ho is that holly or ivy up here and the presents. And, you know, all of this we'll do all the way around. So, yeah, I'll just do the deer and these couple of little birds. Um, and then, yeah, we'll do the, the rest. Maybe I'll leave the birds too, because that shouldn't take too long to do that. And if I go, you know, over an hour, hour and a half, that's fine. Okay, so let's do this one red. Ooh, we need that shirt. So yeah, I have to get to the store though. And I do have, you know, quite a bit of wrapping paper here, but so many, I don't know why, but so many presents this year are Jigundo. I had gotten Maddie because she's absolutely crazy in love with anything to do with Frozen, as many little girls are, including adults, I guess, but... There's just so many toys out now for Frozen, right? And uh, one of the things that Heather had on her wish list on Amazon was this big chair. I think it's like a beanbag chair sort of with arms, you know? Um, and uh, oh, we got to go Oh, no matter which way I do it, I'm going to have green and red next to each other, right? So purple, red, green, purple, red, green, yeah. Oh, well, that doesn't matter. Anyhow, so I got her this, this chair. It's super light. I didn't even take it out of the box to look at it. But I, <laughs> due to the lightness of the box, I am assuming it is just beanbag material even for that though it's pretty light but you should see the size of this box oh my heavens <laughs> it is just gigantic <laughs> and then i got Jaden a snowboard so that box is really long my son-in-law wanted a nesco well this one i I thought it was an Esco when I bought it, and here it's by, uh, oh gosh, uh, I can't remember, starts with an S. Anyhow, um, but it got super high ratings, and uh, it actually is a higher quart size than what the Nesco was, so... And then I got him some Nesco liners, but that box is huge. And he also wanted a cooler because he smokes, he has a smoker and he smokes meats a lot. And so he wanted a cooler because the one that he had, one of them anyhow, went kapot. So I got him that. Well, that's in a big box. Heather wanted a large slow cooker. That's in a big box. My daughter, other daughter, wanted an air fryer. That's in a pretty big box. <laughs> so, yeah, I need to get to the store to get some wrapping paper that's on the long, long rolls. You know, the width is long. So that I can wrap these humongo 
big presents because the size that I have isn't going to be wide enough. So instead of ordering my <laughs> Walmart groceries online like I have been, <laughs> I'm going to go in and shop for my own groceries. <gasps> I know, right? So that I can get some wrapping paper. Probably pick up Bob's card too for Christmas right away then. And I thought another thing we could do together, I had shown a couple videos ago, the um, Christmas cards, the diamond painting Christmas cards that I bought on Amazon. And I thought, I have been working on those every night the past eh, couple nights, and I've gotten one of the eight packs done already. And the one with the rhinestones in, I'm working on right now. And I thought, oh, it might be fun to actually do a diamond and painting and chat doing one of those Christmas cards. So that's what I thought we would do for another color and chat, but it's going to be a diamond painting and chat. So how does that sound to you guys? You can kind of see in actual time how long it takes to do one of these cards. Now, it only takes yeah, maybe an hour and a half, two hours to do one of those cards. So they are so much fun. I do them in my chair in the living room. I'm comfortable. I'm relaxed. And uh, yeah, I just have to be a little more careful with the drills so I don't drop them all. But... So yeah, if that's something you would like to see, um, let me know down in the comments below. And uh, I, as I'm working on those, I will not complete one of them. And I'll leave it to do on camera. We can do one of those together, whether it takes, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours, whatever. We will do it on camera so you can see the whole process. So, how do you like it so far? I think it's looking kind of cute. I like how that turned out in the middle. It kind of does remind me of the tree topper doing it that way. So, yes, I think, again, I'm just going to do the reindeer. Um, maybe this part. I don't know. I'll have to see how long it takes me to do this. will kind of let me know how long it's going to take to do the other stuff because this only took us a little over an hour. So, I think, yeah, I think if I do the reindeer, that's going to be plenty. And then we'll do the rest all on camera. So, I hope you enjoyed this color in chat. And if you did, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new to my channel. Hit the notification bell so you know when I put out new videos. I hope everybody's having a terrific week. And as always, happy coloring. Bye, guys.